Hey guys, what's up? It's Gravy Robber here, and today I'm bringing you another oil painting tutorial. Uh, this one's just another still life. Uh, this time I will provide you with the reference image um, so that you can probably follow along a little bit easier than in the past. Uh, I hope, I mean, I saw a lot of comments for this, so hopefully this will help. Uh, this is just going to be a one sit through painting. Um, as you can see, I just quickly toned uh, with some uh, raw sienna on there and just um, uh, did a light tone real quick. It's nothing, it's probably dry right now. So, um, yeah, we'll get started. My chair is kind of noisy, so I apologize in advance. But I like it, so uh, I'm just going to do a quick little uh, sketch with some oil pastels. Nothing too fancy. Just a quick uh, And these will mesh well, obviously, since I'm painting in oil, um, so that's fine. As you can see, it's just uh, two pairs lying down. It's a nice little practice. It's a little color so I haven't I haven't oil painted in a while. I spent a lot of time in Photoshop recently, so I figured it's time to dive back in. I like using these oil pastels first um, before because sometimes it can just save me. Not not so much save me paint, but um, I'll get some cool little nuances of colors from the oil pastels that then will have um, oil paint over them. Um, which will just save me a layer in some spots if I really like, you know, one area that came about out of it. So sometimes I will go into quite a bit of detail with the oil pastels first before the initial painting. Um, but it varies. Get some of these darks down. Get those real heavy first. I just want to nail the values before I uh, even attempt to jump in. I'm going to be a little bit rusty, so please no judging. Throwing in this bright red because that's going to blend um, a little bit later. And I like that to show through just a tad bit. Um, let's see. Throwing in a little bit of greenish there. Might not make sense for you right away, but it's, you know. It's just how I initially lay it out. Remember to paint or draw with your uh, darkest values first because uh, with oil paint it's 
much easier to go from dark to lighter. Um, you can test that if you want. You can lay down, you know, a really dark, like French ultramarine, and then you'll do titanium white over it, and it goes across very easily. But if you try to do white French ultramarine, then over next, um, it just gets muddied up, and it doesn't give you the same effect that you would uh, desire. jump off the castle for now and uh, one last quick little yeah okay that's just my rough initial sketch I wanted to record that for you guys so you could just see how I don't know I don't even know how long that took five ten minutes whatever um, yeah really fast let's get into the painting so I'm gonna do this all into one sitting um, all in one sitting so with that being said I'm gonna try to hit the colors a little bit more accurately um, in the initial stage than I normally would um, sometimes I'll plan it out a little differently if I know I'm gonna have multiple layers um, but with this one I just want to lay down the color where it should be Get it as accurate from the start. That might not happen, but that's what I'm going to be trying for. <laughs> so uh, let's dive in. Um, you can follow along with the reference image if you want to. You can just listen, or either way. But mixing in, um, I have uh, olive green, Naples yellow. Cadmium orange hue, cadmium red medium, raw sienna, and a little bit of French ultramarine along with titanium white. Um, that's my palette. That wasn't what that mixture just was. That was uh, mainly olive green with raw sienna there. I'm going to do um, cadmium red medium, a little bit of raw sienna, and a little too thin. I'm going to get a little bit more paint than that. That wasn't enough. Um, what are you doing painting as such when you want to do it all in one sitting? A la prima, you can or you want to use a lot more paint, significantly more than when you do uh, Grisel with the thinner layers where you're slowly building them up and then you'll come back to it later. French ultramarine with uh, olive green to get a, a nice darker, darker color there with a tad of uh, cadmium red. Not 
using any black on this palette. Keep that in mind. I am using water mixable oils. Um, as you know, for my past tutorials, that's mainly what I use. And I'm using less water uh, than I have in the past for this because it's going to be just one main layer, basically. Draw this little shadow around this pair here. My easel top doesn't reach down this low, and I prefer to sit for this video, so that's why it's not locked in on the top. I'm getting all the darkest darks in first and I make my way make my way lighter as I progress throughout the painting. When you're looking at your reference, whether it be a still life or something in front of you or a photo, um, try squinting your eyes uh, when you're doing this initial stage and then you'll be able to see the actual values within the painting. Very early on. It's not quite the color that I want it to be, but I'll come back to that area in a second. Last few of the darkest spots, and then I'm gonna jump into uh, a value, one value step higher, lighter. depending on what you're going for. Um, it can either be a color study or you could uh, be practicing, you know, overall um, accuracy of shape and I don't know, whatever else you can, depending on what you're going for, you can change um, the composition, certain edges of things. If something, you know, you prefer it to look a certain way, feel free to change that. You don't have to do uh, exactly what you see, but make sure it looks real if you do it a different way. Okay, I'm gonna clean off my brush. Um, I don't want to muddy up any more dark, dark spots. I'm going to 
try to get the neutral brown color that's on the floorish part of the reference. The tabletop, basically. Try not to paint um, large areas with the all the same exact color um, or multiple areas of the same exact color. You want to throw in tiny little nuances of different colors within the little um, spots, which you should be seeing in uh, your reference. Not there's colors bouncing around everywhere, so try to throw in you know little hints of stuff, and it really makes your your paintings come to life. You don't really notice it. Uh, or you don't, you, you wouldn't think so, but just those tiny little subtle changes in colors around the painting make it a lot more fun. depending on how the edge is, it can either be a very hard, sharp edge, or you can, you know, soften and uh, soften the, the two colors together and you'll get a nice blurry edge. It takes away your eye. If it's somewhere you don't want to focus on. Actually, I'm going to put out another color here on my palette. Find it. So I'm going to put out a medium yellow onto the palette also. I had that out, but... I 
I just need to hit a little bit better of a yellow. Um, and with how my mouth is, uh, there's not quite a great way to hit that yellow that I'm looking for. Um, so that's why the day and age that we live in, we can buy the actual uh, accurate color. The larger pigment range. clean off my brush so I can not muddy up the next color that I'm going to be mixing. Sorry if I get too quiet, I'm trying to focus.
just been doing mixes of uh, Naples yellow with um, medium yellow and raw sienna and um, cadmium orange, different combinations with those. This is just a titanium white and a little bit of French ultramarine and green or olive green uh, to dull it down to kind of get this grayish.
So now this edge right here is blending in too much with the background. Um, so that's going to be the next part that I'll quick fix. Looks like my background just might not be dark enough. create an edge there so obvious and then I'm also gonna have to add um, a little bit of a highlight on that pear edge there I hate not being able to lock it in at this height. It's quite annoying. I'm almost to the final highlights of this. I don't think I want to spend any more time on this study. It's kind of just. Just a practice piece. I'm mixing a very dark color uh, with the olive green and the uh, cadmium red. not using a black, uh, an actual black out of the tube. Because that can really flatten your
add more white onto my palette. I'm getting kind of low. Again, this is titanium white. I do not want a pure white uh, going onto the canvas. I'm uh, just going to a tiny bit of a yellowish brown into there, so it's a little muted. Just do not want that hot, hot white. Going back over the areas, over the highlights, so I don't just have clumps of white out there as the last thing painted in that area, because it kind of shows. Darker there.
Just going through and blending the background. Too much red and pink in these. I need to clean up this shape. The shape's all wrong. Applying paint thicker and thicker as we go. Um, I started out pretty thick though as is, but um, now it's starting to barely using any water besides just cleaning off my brush.
some of these parts you can make more interesting if you want, if you find that they are dull. I just want to change up the shape of something. You totally have freedom to do that. Just stop working on this because I'm overkilling it now.
I'm just loading paint up onto my uh, palette knife and kind of scraping at different angles and applying paint in big globs onto there. Everyone's always asking how to use the palette knife. It's just Think of it, how, how would you apply paint with a little thing of metal? I mean, think about the different ways. It's not like there's some hidden secret. Um, I mean, yeah, there's different ways, and I'm sure different artists and pr like pros will say there's only one way to use it, but it's just another tool. It's just like a brush. It's not that there's perfect way to use it, it's just however we decide to. 